don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Bran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. All right, story's getting more intriguing, more layers to it. This is very odd. Also, why did they open the gate to have that conversation? That seems like something you'd want to do in private. Chapter five. The conspiracy? What big ears you have. That was my second guess. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. Yeah, your family, dude. Your dad is gone. Your mom is gone. Your grandma's evil. You, you, you got some bad luck, Luca. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Bad Luke Lucca. Bad, what the heck did I just say? Bad luck, Luca, is what I was going for, but I kind of like the first thing we said. <coughs> What's wrong? <coughs> you look like you've seen a ghost. <coughs> How are you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Definitely not. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Get the way. Need to overhaul out the treehouse. We can do that. Also, there's no way there's a perfect, perfectly rational explanation for the twins that we saw over there. Oh, these are glowing now. For Iggy's this def deformation, for Grand taking Luca and doing whatever she did with him. Those are really cool. Oh, here we go again. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Everybody's in on this. Just dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try it, Martin, your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. You obviously have not watched South Park and what happens when you just sign things and don't read them. Spoiler, it's not pleasant if you're in the middle. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment. Oh boy. Almost pondering the possibility. <laughs> Wait, careful what you say to the, to the plant people, man. Then broken laughter as they walked away. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk to this guy. He likes my grand jam. I don't. I don't want no part of talking. We're just gonna run right past him. Like everything's cool. You know, all fine. Hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good hard bop right in the kisser. Oh, Gran tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. I've, she's never told me that, but okay. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you'd better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. Not on my own. You'll see Beck. You don't acknowledge Beck. I know her fur is a little bit darker than mine, but you should see Beck standing right in front of you. That's just kind of rude, Mr. Nuncreed. I wonder if there's any more ominous things that the gator has to say to us. The answers you seek will be revealed to you in due time. The question is, the figure intoned, are you prepared to live with the truth? What did Grand do to Mama? Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. <sighs> I can't wait. Oh, we recognize you. You're the one I tried to throw a stick at, I think. I'm not really sure what it was that hit the ground. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. I feel like y'all could do a little bit more work in uh, decorating, making this place a little bit more festive. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without you. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense. 
That reminds me. I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yes, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, I would be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. Unlock it, please. But I mean the entire Valentine family. Present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all of this? Gosh. I've never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival. All of this. There's gotta be a hundred down on the luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Seeds? Little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. And a bit of Luca in his teeth, don't forget that part. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Boy, you just, you leak evil out. You walk around and there's a sludge pile behind you because it's just straight blackness coming at your soul. Your sign evil even has the evil green to it. I'm glad that that conversation right in front of us. It must be great to be 12 again because just nobody notices you and you can just listen in to everything. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So what's your buddy Rollo like? Rollo? He's... Rollo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be, like running into electrified fences. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thing he is. It's a kind of long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Oh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died, and I'm starting to believe it wasn't an accident. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water, or air, or soil. Nobody knows. But. All the crops died, and everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Yeesh. Next year, the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rollo's farm got the short end of the stick. Yep, for some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since Perennial Harvest came to town. A Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. Yep, 
First thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels, one town over for a week. While they can de decontaminate the groundwater. While they decontaminated the groundwater. Now let's think about this for a second. Suddenly, a very rich and successful, relatively young man dies. The crops suddenly fail drastically. Nobody can explain why. The following harvest season, it becomes a crapshoot whether something's good or not good. And then a new player comes into town and they are like, we can fix everything. We will fix everything, but you gotta leave for about a week so we can treat the water. Now, I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, but it is suspicious. Hmm. I see Beck agrees with me. We'd better get going. All right, well, onward and upward. Rollo! Our dude Rollo! It's about time! I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. He must be Rollo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rollo waggled his head with pride. He seems to be pretty friendly. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, Luca. You know the security is a concern? Hey, Luca. You know the con <laughs> Hey, Luca. You know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some... Improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. Oh, are you gonna use the gun that literally got me killed in another chapter? Love this, looking forward to it. Wait till you see the stick. Oh, oh, forget the stick. There's a window, there's a steel door, ladder goes up. There's an alarm system. Target practice? He goes out loud, doesn't he? Always. Yeah, but what about the gun up top? I want to talk about the Mick Flurry, the Mick, the Mick Loser, the Mick Sorry upstairs. So, uh... Am I not allowed up anymore? Or what's the deal with that? I have... Oh, interesting. I missed. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to try again. Take a little bit further back this time. Whoa, too far back, too far back, too far back. Sorry. Try that again. Take aim and fire! And that was bad. Beck, you wanna give this a shot, bud? You wanna help me out here? Hmm. If I get up closer. There we go, all right. You just gotta get up real, real close to it. Oh my gosh, don't make me be embarrassed again. Okay, real, real close to it. Oh my, this is what I was, oh. No, that worked. Thanks, shot. Rollo, you don't think this is a little overkill, bud? I feel like you had it covered when it was stationary. Also, I'd work on my defense. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. I'm taking the can. I feel like I earned the can. I feel like I did enough to take the can with me. So? Pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative. I'll give you that. Luca! Are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, Luca. You promised to fill me in about the Valentine Warehouse. Um. Luca sucked in a long breath. <laughs> so like I said, there was someone there. I don't know why I said the sentence like that. So like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters. I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Now we know it wasn't a man. Now we know it was Gran, or maybe it was a man, and this one we saw was Gran, but they were the same suits. It could be that. There could be more than one yellow suit walking around. I didn't consider that. So somebody killed us and didn't tell Grant that they killed us. Interesting. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You you keep saying it was a man. Oh, never mind. Here comes the truth. 
They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran. Wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rolo let out a low whistle. I can't whistle that well. Hold on. That wasn't too bad, right? Yeah, we'll go with that. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your grand in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Rollo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so, we can logically conclude... Aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. Luca re not Luca. Rollo really wants us to be aliens or alien zombies. There's a fascination with zombies and aliens that I don't think he understands fully what happens when a zombie invasion hits your town. You think the farm farming going bad was bad? No, there's more bad to be bad. And their leader is your gran, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged because there is no way in the world that another mask could exist. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. It's in the jam. It's in the jam. Whatever it is. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Because Rollo has the tact of a five-year-old. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. I caught it! It's not his grandmother, is it? They don't even look alike. They don't even look like they're the same species of things. That's not his grandmother. It's somebody else's grandmother pretending to be his grandmother so she can do dastardly grandmother-unlike things. It's been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. And technically since you showed up back too, you're not completely innocent in this either. We can say the same thing about your family. Okay, Rollo's already there. Me and Rollo, we think alike. But you're right. Luca, your grin is hiding something. And Pa always said, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grin really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. That didn't take much to convince him. <laughs> this is a really quick turnaround right there. We should totally investigate your house. Don't you think I would have found something at the house? Not if it was hidden. You're right. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Grant's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter six. We're moving so fast. Secret lair. Oh, not like we haven't exposed too many secrets. Actually, we've exposed no secrets. We've found a lot of secrets happening, but we've got no idea why the secrets are occurring. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seem to grow colder. How many days forged ahead? Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Okay, you just mean summer as in that day of summer. Got it. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, 
half dreading what they might discover the next day. Oh, in this world, he never got the walkie talkies because Rollo never went into the trash can. So, ah, uh, so no walkie talkie dreams. Oh, new shirt. What time is it? Pancake time! Oh, nope, we're back to the old sweater. Still pancake time! Da -da -da -ba -ba -da -da -ba -da. Still really want to go in this room because I think the secret that is grandmother, grandmother, is behind that door. Or the secret of where our mother is, or her skeleton may be behind that other door. Oh, well, you, you think I was supposed to call y'all, but okay. Rollo? What on earth is that? Hmm? <coughs> <clears throat> I'm not going to laugh this time. There will be no laughing this episode. I will maintain professionalism and seriousness. Rollo is a serious detective, so I shall be a professional Let's Player. Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're going to need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep. Whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. That's your thing, Rollo. If I were a gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Oh, I got a, bit, a little bit of list going on there. Cabinet with confidence. Ah! Okay. He I... coughed as a veil of dust hit his nope, face. Nope, I'm not laughing. He... Me and Rollo think alike. I would have done the same thing, Rollo. Keep doing your thing. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what you're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. Keep at it, Rollo. You'll figure it out eventually. First hunches are for suckers. It's the second hunt, huh, Rollo? That's what me and you were thinking. It's the second hunch. Eureka. She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rollo. Drat. It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash! I'm not laughing! <sighs> okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? I'm still thinking about his expression. <laughs> think about the. Why is it even funny? It's just Rollo. Rollo makes it funny, bro. Yeah. The closet upstairs. So, maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice. It's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. I'm not laughing. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I am going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. I want to see it. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted and turned toward the kitchen. I'll tell you what, Luca's face seems about the same. That is not his look of realization. Sprint! All right, Rollo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've got upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with- Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rollo's back. Yes. <laughs> Your expert detective skills, my man. Keep doing being a detective. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. 
This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around it the wasn't that to peer in. It wasn't even that funny. I don't know why you laugh. It wasn't even that funny. With the glass what are we looking opened, at? A perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Every grandmother has them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. I think my grandfather might have had some too. I can't remember anymore. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, our eyes are searching for anything but amiss. The only distinct feature was its impeccability. Hmm, indubitably. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and. As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. Oh, grandmother. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. You didn't tell me that Batman lives here, too. Bruce Wayne's got holes everywhere. He just goes around knocking on people's doors, asking to install bat caves. Seems like your grand has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds, Batman, Batman, and superheroes. So, which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Luca seems a little resolved. He's getting all kind of upset about that. Maybe his mom is that. Nope, she's not. Okay. It's a more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. I can do that. Um, Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. Which one? A finger through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. Who the heck is Walter? Have we met a Walter yet? I don't think we've met a Walter. I remember a lot of names. One Walter isn't one of them. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's, oh my God. I should stop playing. I should I should just stop. I literally the main character's dad that we've talked to, fished with, made a bunch of jokes about. It's his it's the dad's name. In my defense, I thought dad's name was dad. Alright, just like in Timmy Terry and Fairly Odd Parents, right? Dad is dad, mom is mom, they don't have any real names. That's what I figured was going on with Luca. So don't bl I'm just gonna take a forget it. I will not forget Walter's name again. Here we go. Dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Ooh, what kind of secrets are we about to expose? Personal secrets, deep secrets, who's sleeping with who kind of secrets. Well, are you going to read it? I... Here, let me help. Swipe the folder from the <laughs> and begin leafing through the pages. Damn it! I said I wasn't going to lie. That one was just... It was, a, it was something stung on my throat. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, boy. What? <laughs> That's me getting it out. <laughs> Rollo. He whistled to himself, <laughs> barely looking at the text. Right? How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. How do you skip to the straight middle of a cheeseburger? Like, oh, you eat from the middle? Is that what he's saying? Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Yes, indeed. What do the documents say, Rollo? Ah, here we are. I can't even do his voice anymore. <laughs> Follow-up examination of Terrence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperatures continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. Okay, before we even go on, it is interesting that he's talking about being cold, because that's what it seems like he's describing. And in Luca's vision, that one night, he saw his dad fishing, and he had the ice turn him, well, he had the water freeze, and then it clawed up his body, and he turned ice, and then he crashed into a million little pieces. So maybe that was more of a vision than a dream or a nightmare. His dad was trying to tell him something from beyond the grave. I'm paying attention. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Miss Wilby just a few days past, and it has something to do with the fertilizer, I'm assuming. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rolla looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy! Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. 
So, Mr. Nuncreed's also a doctor or a doctor's assistant or... Wait! Bolo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins! Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental. Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Rolo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terrence's condition falls close behind, exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Sounds like your dad might have stumbled into a conspiracy theory and got himself killed, buddy. Your dad might have died a hero. For whatever that's worth. What does it say next? Rolo rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Okay, now that I'm also thinking about this, if this was where the dad was working the entire time as a doctor, why is it that Luca had no idea this place existed? Was that covered up? But then Luca would have remembered it as a kid, and it's not like his dad was hiding being a doctor from his kid. So what is this? Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Hmm. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? Oh, right. No, this is the grandmother's secret room. She just stole that document from the father and put it down here. She's hiding evidence. What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit. Whoa, Luca. Hey, 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 hey. You are too young. To, wait, no, 12, 12. Wait a minute. Hold on, 12. Now, we were all saying it's messed up. No, not shit, though. Not a, not a 12. That's way too early for that. I mean, maybe shit. Maybe he's experimenting with definitely hell, but not not. Nah, that's that's too that's too much for you, Luca. Luca Calm down. The door shut. Or maybe I'm wrong. What age were you when you said your first curse word? What age were you when you said your first? All right. Well, that's that. Anything else to explore? A web of string connected photos of people from the town. Oh, who's sleeping with who? Finally, the mystery deepens for real. Interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. I'm curious. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your grad a serial killer? Cause I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on there. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Ares has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim! We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. I'd imagine not. Okay, for those who are paying attention super closely right now and like just going over the details, pouring over the facts and determining the story probably leads ahead of what I am right now. You probably have pieced together what that clipboard means, I mean, what this whole string thorp thing means. I'd love to hear what you're thinking because I have no idea what that means. Question marks between on on the heiress, but then hers was, qu or hers was crossed out. Also on her brother, his is still there. On the, the, the new parents, Beck's parents, question marks there. Weird. And then there was a check mark by Mr. Nuncreed. What is it that Mr. Nuncreed, Nuncreed has? Maybe he's infected, because we did see that, or hear from the notes from Walter's notes, that he was exhibiting. No, we we're waiting on lab results for Mr. Nuncreed. What is it that Mr. Nuncreed could possibly be in? And why is the grandmother so interested in giving him jam? Oh, oh, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> This angle. <laughs> We're 
We're not supposed to get a charm from that thing. It's just something fun to do. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. In jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Oh, so she gave jam to three individuals in another story. Now we know that jam is some type of explosive. Checkmark by Mr. Nuncrete probably means he's in to do whatever it is they're about to do. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Rollo, please don't. Rollo, whatever you're about to do, just think think through it, buddy. Just, just... Huckleberries! He smacked his lips. I already did that. Me and Rollo on the same page. Rollo's like my animated spirit animal or something, man. A hint of brown sugar. And... Ink? Ink. What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Wow, that is a really good taste bud. Them silicas are strong, Rollo. Aha! Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. Okay, hopefully that wasn't poison or bomb making materials, Rollo. It's addressed to Miss Fratelli, who we delivered jam to in another life. A grand jam gram. No! No! I will not laugh! It says, Last night I used the disguise Ares provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. We heard about Operation Spark Plug. I hated the name. Still hate the name. Oh, man! Are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So, more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. And he does it well. Is there something else that we're supposed to explore over there? Nope, it's something about this map. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. What is Grand Jam going to do with the jam? Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every map is a treasure map, Rollo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. And fault that logic. No, you really can't. It makes sense. Never seen a new treasure map. Who wants to watch a movie with a new treasure map? They just, what the, I don't want to see that. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it... Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. They will find out where Rollo has been captured in another lifetime. Or being held in another lifetime. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Or bombs. Um... Rollo? That doesn't look like treasure to me. End of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure? Real bummer. Rollo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Oh. Did you just say gulp? <laughs> This just feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. Give me a the festival! <laughs> Not if we stop her. Yes. Oh. Uh. What was that? Luca looked up from the map. We're about to die. It's about to be into this tree. That's what that was. What was that? No. I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs! Shh! Quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. Oh, it's dark, dark. And they became statues in the dark. But didn't we leave the upstairs dining thing, the, the thing with all the plates and the chinaware open? So isn't she clearly gonna see when she walks into the kitchen? Overhead, 
creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. We're dead. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Whoever was assisting in the audio production of this game, well done. It sound those footsteps sounded monofabinicula. Monofasalia. Also, everybody's voice is so clear. And when I say everybody, I mean the narrator, because that's the only person that's been talking outside of me. So crystal clear. I love it. Look at that. Listen to that sound design. Beautiful. Suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. We are alive. A muffled male voice broke the silence. That's not grand, or is it? Oh. I almost heard that one. I don't know who that is. That doesn't look familiar to me. A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Right, because we left the doorway open. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know who that is. The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Oh, here we go. Uh oh. oh. Yoo-hoo! Oh, 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 oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Oh, 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 oh. I'm just here to help. That thump is dope! Oh. Just thump. at the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. I need that thump in my life. That was dope. Oh. Huh? Oh. Guess it's nothing. Rollo shifted suddenly. No, Rollo. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Oh, don't. It was too late. Rollo was already inching toward the stairway. Why? He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Never mind. Got it. I, Rollo is too courageous as well. Luca holds out a secrets too much. He's too courageous. Oh. Flaming chicken goo! <laughs> With all his weight, Rollo tackled the man to the ground. Bro, you gotta forget about that flaming chicken coo. It is not that serious, my dog. Rallo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rallo. That was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Maybe turn on the lights. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. Okay, his, his dad was a doctor, so it would make sense that he would know to do that. Or saw it on TV. But if he saw it on TV, there's a good chance that he's missing the right area. You sure clobbered him good, Rollo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light. Thank you. Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Hey, it's Mr. Tolliver. Chapter seven. Here's the thing. Mr. Tolliver is on this. He's one that we also delivered jam to along with Miss Fratelli and Mr. Nuncrete. I bet you there's a check mark on his name if we were to find it on the map, which means he's in on the plan, which means good job, Rollo.